Bitcoin has seen a major rejection from our critical resistance zone. From that rejection, we have seen a large decrease in price. And I will be telling you in this video how this is actually an eye-opening opportunity, what I am looking at next and the next best trades to come. I'm gonna be preparing you for those trades, those levels, and absolutely how to profit on these moves. So I'll be keeping this video professional as always to the point and giving you all of that information that you absolutely need to know. So the first thing I'd like to start off with is probably a lot of people's <laughs> questions is uh, in the public front that obviously aren't inside of the group is where have I been for the past few weeks? Of course, I haven't made a public YouTube video. And really simply my answer is I've been focusing on making champions content and helping out the champions team, right? Uh, but today I have now got some free time and thus I will make this and I'm making this public free YouTube video. Uh, so I put it over on Twitter. What would you like in this one? Bitcoin, altcoins or the stocks? And the majority of people today have king of all Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. People are wanting Bitcoin in today's video. So thus Bitcoin is what I'll be talking about in today's video. Simple as that. And yeah, it's obviously nice to be making a public YouTube video for you all once more. Um, so with Bitcoin on the topic of discussion today, um, as it's been a few weeks since my last public YouTube video, I'd just like to remind ourselves what we were looking at in that video. Of course, mentioning and talking very much about the critical resistance zone that we were coming up into, uh, because we obviously have seen a rejection from that zone. So I'd like to just do a five second clip from that last video to bring us up to speed of what brought us down and what we are then, of course, using that context to aid us in the, you know, the probabilities of what is to come next and thus the next best trade. So let's just remind ourselves very briefly here. We do get our rejection here, then I'm looking for the more heavy decrease in price. So as it stands for me, this is an extremely important zone on the chart. So, of course, in that video, I was making you very much aware of the resistance zone that we were coming up into, and that was around 29,500. If we do see a rejection from that critical you know, resistance zone, then I am expecting a large decrease in price. And for me, you know, let's just also add in some technical analysis so you can see exactly where we got this rejection from. So, of course, I'm making that video while we're around this part of the chart. And we can see using a trend line, actually, very simply enough, how we have seeing this as being the overall high, right? So we have our initial point, touch point two, touch point three of the trend line on the rejection, up and around that zone of 29,500, which was a weekly NPOC. And I want to actually just say, first of all, this was a difficult short to take in terms of timing the high, because we are at the time spending a little bit of time above the NPOC. So this is what I would refer to as a difficult trade to time the high. OK, I would I would never be the trader that's longing the breakout. So long is just no never looking for a long while we're moving up here. You know, that's just not how I trade. So the only trade that I'm looking for at this time is a short. But the initial short off the high for me, I didn't take because that is a difficult trade to take. For me, there was not the confluence. There was no rejection at the time. So what I do is remain a little bit patient and wait to see if then a rejection starts to form. And what that gives is what is known as a failed auction. So with a failed auction, I'm not looking to time the high. I'm actually waiting to see the visible, visible rejection, maybe some trap longs into the high market structure change. That is exactly what we got a few hours later, right? And so my entry was actually around 29,200 for the short here. You know, this is remaining patient, waiting to have seen the rejection of that critical resistance zone. We've then come above it, come back down below, visible rejection, okay, market structure change, high probabilities that we're going to see now a large decrease in price. Thus, I got to trade the charts and take the short and take the short I did. It's like then I was updating my team. Easiest trade right now would be if we see a drop on Bitcoin, okay? And that is to take the overall range lows down at around $26,000, right? So it's a simple case of understanding that it's very likely we're going to go to the overall lows on Bitcoin and the easiest trade is the drop on Bitcoin. And what happened the next day? We got the drop on Bitcoin. <laughs> we headed down towards $26,000, okay? From here, I go with my team while we're trading at around 26K. The key resistance for me is... 27,700. So this was five days ago now telling my team 27,700. That's the key resistance above us while we're trading at 26K. 
Well, fast forward to three days to two days ago now. And the next update that I've given my team is, hey, we're coming up into 27,700 now. This was our key resistance to be aware of. You know, that's very similar to how we were trading the last one. Look at this daily on the NPOC. We were coming up to an NPOC on an NPOC, right? So once again, we have this zone of resistance to be aware of. Let's see if we get that rejection off around 27,700. We started to come in hit that big target that we had of 27,700, and we got a rejection. So this is once again, I wouldn't be trying to short the exact high, but what do we see here? We see a visible rejection. It's like I was telling my team yesterday in my daily morning trading live stream update for the champions. This is a visible rejection. This front run is something that we're seeing more and more of. Let's trade the front run. This is an acceptable short, and there's no long trades to be had here, right? I was telling my team very clearly yesterday, no long trades at all here, okay? Uh, so for me, it's it's a simple case of trading the charts, seeing rejections, entering those short trades. So that's the quick five, 10 minute rundown of what's happened over the past few weeks, where we are now. And now I'll start to move on to what I'm looking at next. OK, because I do feel there is a lot of nice opportunities upcoming here, to be fair. Um, so quick summary of 30 seconds here. Difficult short to time the high. Be patient. Wait for the failed auction see the market structure change. Yes, you do not short the exact high. Yeah, it's a, not a short way you get short the exact high, right? I'm shorting a few percentage from the high, but that's a high probability short at that time. You've seen the failed auction, you've seen the market structure change. At that point, if you're not taking the short, you're simply not trading the charts. You've got the visible rejection. And it's like then we saw at 27,700 zone. We come up into that zone. That is a visible rejection. OK, that's a visible rejection. You've got then starting to get your MS change. And it's like I was saying to my team in, in the daily update, if you are a champion, um, you know, this, these front runs are happening more and more. So let's tr trade that. Right. Let's take advantage of it and look for a little bit of a decrease in price. And we did get a little bit of a decrease in price, right, around 3%. Uh, so that brings us up to where we are now. So I'm going to zoom in down to a lower term time frame on the 30 minute chart here as we start to get more of a zoomed in view. Um, two things that I'd like to mention to you all very briefly. And the first thing is, of course, um, you know, content galore for the champions right now. You obviously have myself, Igor, Rivalry and Severin. Uh, Rivalry and Severin t doing their full-time week last week. Absolutely wonderful rivalry, hitting almost 100% on his live trading stream. Severin, some brilliant daily updates with new strategies, um, you know, working on the CCTR like an advanced uh, you know, for himself, like a better version of it, like really impressive stuff. So if you want, you know, scalp traders, day traders, swing traders, crypto, Forex, stock market, daily live streams, uh, you know, professional help, 24-7 trading assistant, uh, helpful community, statistics, understanding all that. Well, that's what you get in the side of the champions package, right? So just reminding you, you haven't seen me on YouTube, but you definitely would have seen content inside of the group. So that's just something to make you aware of. That's, of course, where our priorities and, and the majority of our vast efforts go into, right? Uh, so that was the first thing that I wanted to say. And the second thing was uh, talking about the exchanges. So in the video made a few weeks ago, I was talking, of course, about the upcoming KYC, uh, how Bybit, of course, are introducing KYC. And if you are, for example, from the United States or you simply don't want a KYC, then you could not trade on Bybit, the actual platform. Uh, so I was looking for upcoming exchanges or alternatives where there is no KYC requirement, right? And I said, you know, I'm not going to touch BitGet because that just seems like ultra scam. Uh, the amount of money that they throw at influence is just crazy. The, the scam taxes, that, that was out of the, out of the question. BitGet, big no-no for me. Uh, but, you know, I gave fair time to Apex, BitGet, uh, sorry, BitGet, uh, BingX. <laughs> I gave fair time. Well, I did give fair time to be fair to BitGet, but I just ruled it out. Uh, BingX, MexC, I was I even tried out Binance once more, but um, you know, so I've, uh, KuCoin, I still think KuCoin is decent. You know, I went on to Kraken. I tried out a load of different exchanges for the time being. Um, the one that I've you know lent towards was simply Apex because this was just user friendly for everybody, right? Apex is a decentralized exchange that's actually built into Bybit. It is a it is a separate exchange. It's just built into their website. So you can actually use Apex with no KYC. And essentially it feels as if very familiar to you because you are still on Bybit. So this was a great advantage for the, you know, people that do not want to or cannot KYC. 
Apex because it's simply built into Bybit. So that's kind of why we were recommending Apex. Uh, but the other one's very close. Uh, I'm going to start to talk more and more. It's, it's, it, let me know in the comments down below. Are you interested still in finding another exchange? Have you tried Apex? Do you like decentralized exchange? If you'd like a centralized exchange that doesn't require KYC, let me know in the comments below. And I will tell you what actually ended in number two in my research. So let me know down below. I'm more than happy to share that with you if it's of interest or if Apex is fine for you all. And the only thing here is uh, it's only USDC at the moment. Uh, they are adding USDT Tether, but at the moment it's only USDC. So yeah, let me know if that's okay or whether you'd like another opinion and option. And I can obviously give that uh, probably over on Twitter for you. Um, yeah, with that all said, let's move back over onto the charts. So Bitcoin, of course, it got our rejection off of the critical resistance zone. From there, range low, failed auction, coming up into 27,700, okay? From there, we've seen a local decrease in price, okay? And really what we're starting to see now is off of this local decrease in price, what are some things that I am interested in and some things that I pay attention to? Well, first of all, the stock market, the ES, even though we do not directly, well, I'm not personally directly trading that, but it's something that I am aware of because we have seen correlations, but right now, I do not believe there is a strong correlation between DXY, between ES and between Bitcoin. Bitcoin itself is actually trading, uh, not correlated to these assets right now. Of course, correlations come and they go. They do not last 100% of the time all the time because that would just be <laughs> just not how trading and probabilities work, right? Um, so right now, there is no correlation. We can still monitor it, but for me, it's not as helpful. So what does that mean? It means we need to focus purely on the Bitcoin chart in front of us. We need to be loading up. If you're a day trader or a scalp trader, right, you've got to be on your order flow. That's using Atis. That's using exo charts. It's really trying to take those micro sculpts that could just be for a simply, you know, 50 to $100 move, a very small micro move focused on the lower term timeframes and the order flow that'd be using such as your trend reversal charts or down on like the one minute chart, really taking advantage of micro moves, micro sculpts uh, to take advantage of making profits here. In this video, I do not want to focus on those micro moves uh, because not the majority of our viewership is, is not going to be interested in that. Okay, so I'm going to focus more on the day trade slash swing trade here. Uh, just because it's a lot easier for people to understand. <laughs> if you want to be a sculpt trader, <laughs> go and join the mentorship because uh, it's not it's not the easiest thing in the world, right? So for the sculpt, uh, yeah, that's, that's what you can get over in the website. For here on the swing trade, it's a lot more easier to explain. For me, still, there remains the critical resistance zone above us. So here we can see we rejected off the weekly NPOC, but we actually slightly front run the daily NPOC. So this still gives us our zone of around 27,700. Uh, so what can we look for here? If we are to see some strength, we can look for one time SFP. Okay, so swing failure pattern. Just as you've almost looked here, you've seen a swing failure pattern of the previous high. So this is what you can understand, right? Why did we reject here? Well, we rejected simply off of the weekly NPOC. Okay, we rejected off the weekly NPOC. We took out this previous high before the drop. Okay, and slightly front run the daily. And that's the reasons why we slightly front run the daily, because there was critical resistance slightly below that. And that's why we always class this as a zone. But just as we see an SFP here of this high, well, we could look for the same again, right? An SFP onto the daily NPOC off of this high. OK, so for the upside, I would, you know, in terms of a swing trade, yes, we've got internal trades to be looking at here, right? There are internal trades, but in terms of the swing trade, I'm not looking internally here. I'm looking for the next highs. For me, I'd be looking for the SFP. And if we do not get that, well, <laughs> I think we got a lot of volume. Well, I can just show you, we got a lot of volume up there around 28,000, right? When we take this whole range POC, you can see that's all coming in around 28K. So for me, there's a, a few areas of interest for what we could be leading into a swing trade. Again, I'd always base this off of the reaction. Just as I didn't get in the overall high of this short, I didn't need to. OK, I'm not going to be looking for the overall highs. I'm going to wait for the reaction and then take the trade. Because if there is no reaction, there is no trade. And I'll simply look higher for the next level. Right. So that comes of the MPRC of the SFB. Then moving on to the point of control here of the overall range. And then simply, I'll be building it up. There isn't that much resistance, in my opinion, above us. What we do have is an interesting level that comes in here around these highs in confluence with the CC, right? So this is, for me, an interesting zone because we do have some decent confluence there as well. Um, 
so yeah, for me, that, 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 that's what's of interest to the upside. If we get through that, I'm going to be actually looking for the, for the larger increase in price. I'm not going to be shorting, shorting, and shorting, shorting, and shorting to that type of thing, right? Um, in terms of, and this is what I always will say to you, as a professional trader that can come in here, you know, happily see decreases, happily see increases, we have no underlying bias of what we want. OK, we have underlying biases based off of probabilities and statistics, but I am happy to see this market increase. I'm happy to see this market decrease. Whether next week we're trading at 40,000 or next week we're trading at 10,000. For me, it's going to make no difference in the world. I'm happy to see either of those prices because I'm just looking for trades and opportunities. I'm not a bag holder. I'm not an ultra bull, ultra bear. No, I'm trading the charts. I'll happily take a long if we drop to support and I'll happily take a short if we hit resistance and reject, right? Trade the charts. That's what you want to do if you actually want to make profits in this market. So in terms of downside opportunities, I'm aware this market can move up and down, right? When it moves up, I'm looking for shorts. When it moves down, I'm looking for longs. So in my opinion, the long, though, is a lot more difficult. And again, it's like if you are a champion, I'm repeating myself here a little bit. Uh, but it's for me, there is not great opportunities here locally. OK, so, yes, we could be looking at things such as, you know, the NPOC of around the CC. You know, this is something that we can be aware of. But these, in my opinions, are not these like golden major levels. Yeah, they are levels where, again, if you're a day trader, if you're a scope trader specifically, great, good opportunities. Get in there, look for the micro bounce, look for that quick scope trade, you know, walk away, close the trade, make profits. But if we're looking at swing trades, I don't class this as major opportunity, right? There is opportunity, but it's based off of a lower term time frame reaction and then execution. Because I feel that the major levels, OK, would actually be not internally here. Just as I don't feel there's a major good short here internally, I don't feel there's a major good long here internally. OK, of course, we can move up here and get a lower high reject. We can come here, get a higher low and bounce. I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not something that I'm interested in a swing trade. Uh, so for me, the actual opportunities for a major long would be actually a break of the low moving down towards twenty four thousand dollars. Of course, that twenty five thousand three hundred everybody in the world is looking at. So I feel we'll either front run that and not hit it or get the larger move through it and actually you know, get more of that fake out into the older range. You know, everybody starts to feel like, oh, my God, we've lost 25,300. We're back into the old range. This is ultra bearish, right? And then you remain patient. You're aware that, yeah, coming into that old range is bearish. But if that ends in the failed auction, would well, that actually equals, you know, a fake out into the old range, failed auction back above, you know, you're going to see a lot of trap shorts, a lot of fear, take advantage of that for the move back up. So for me, that that is what, you know, it, it requires like, trading the market right trade trading the psychology of other people uh that requires a little bit of patience to to see if it does come to fruition uh, but if it does that requires a very uh, good mindset you know trading against the emotions of other people just fully focused on the probabilities and what would be a very high probability trade if we are to see that failed auction of around 25k um, so I hope that has made sense to you. Why personally, in terms of a swing, I've got nothing internally here. I'd either look for the higher outer boundaries of our current internal range or to the downside, once again, a break to the internal range lower. We have got CC for Fibonacci, we have got MPOCs, and you know, they've got potential harmonics that are going to start to form. But based off of the data that I have right now in front of my eyes, based off the order flow, I've not seen any major, um, you know, push of either level. At the moment, this is pretty low volume, pretty even neutral data that we have. So, you know, I'm not going to be that interested in trading something that is a 50-50 probability, right? I'm going to be waiting for when I'm getting 70, 80, 90% probability trading setups. If I get that and that can occur with more data and time, right, I'll happily take the trade. Until then, I'll remain patient. There is opportunities in altcoins, okay? Uh, and it's like I said over on Twitter today, if you want, if you want alts, let me know. But you wanted Bitcoin, so here's the Bitcoin update. And I will say this, uh, if you want to see alts in the next video, let me know in the comments down below. All right, hit that like button, smash up the likes. Let's try and get this one to 3,000 likes. If we reach that 3,000 like target, I'll read the comment. Well, I'll always read the comments down below, but I'll pick the most liked comment to cover. And if that's an altcoin, <laughs> better, right? Uh, so yeah, leave a comment down below of what altcoin you'd like or stocks if you want stocks. So if you want Bitcoin to continue, let me know down below. Uh, smash the likes. 
uh, leave a comment. And uh, also, yeah, the other thing that I'll ask is let me know. Just as this is for beneficial for you, uh, but let me know if you are liking Apex or if you want my centralized exchange that doesn't require KYC, let me know too. And I'll give you the uh, best option of that because this is a decentralized exchange, right? Not everybody likes decentralized exchange. I liked it because it runs off of Bybit, but it is a it is a different exchange. You do not require KYC for Apex, but it's directly linked to Bybit and people like that familiarity, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Happy to help out, happy to give you my time. And um, yeah, if you want more of my time, then you know where to get that, right? <laughs> Chartchampions.com. This is where you got the inbuilt journal, you got the inbuilt deals, you got all of the vault where you got the templates, the cheat sheets, the speedrun modules, the courses. You know, you got the Elliott Waves course now. You've got the advanced strategies that are coming out, the new new scoping strategies. All of this, uh, you got the statistics coming out. Yeah, just content galore that we're putting in a lot of time and effort for. So that's where you're going to get the best stuff if you really want to take advantage and learn and, you know, <laughs> do it the right way. Chartchampions.com. So what I'm going to say, thank you ever so much. Hope you've thoroughly enjoyed. That's going to be me signing out here. Cheers, everybody. Thank you and goodbye.